By now you should have your apple traced onto three different papers. This is the apple you drew from observation the other day. You should have it onto three different papers. And what I want you to do is choose one of the papers, but it cannot be the watercolor paper. So the watercolor paper is thicker. And then you have two that are on drawing paper that are thinner and smoother. So pick one of the ones that is not on the watercolor paper. And that is the one that you will use today. So I'm going to use this one. And today we are going to be using chalk pastel. And chalk pastels can get kind of messy because it's just like using sidewalk chalk, only it's um, they're smaller and they work a little bit more smoothly than sidewalk chalk. So when you're working, it's always a good idea to have a piece of paper towel like this that you can put under your hand while you're drawing because this likes to smear. Okay, it likes to get everywhere. So what you're going to do first is choose the color for your apple. So you're going to look at the apple that you have at your table and decide what color would work best for that apple. For my apple I think I'm going to need a few different colors because I can see that it's yellow on top here and there's some like reds and oranges on the sides. So I'm going to start with my lightest color first. When you're working with chalk pastels it's always best to start with the lightest color first. And I'm going to use my light yellow here to color those yellow spots on my apple. And you can just use the tip or the corner and it'll help you control what you're doing a little bit. So I'm coloring the yellow spot on my apple. And the yellow is kind of all the way around the top part here. So I'm going to create that yellow look that's on my apple. And I need to be careful because it's going to make a lot of dust. And I do not want to blow that dust for a couple of reasons. First, it'll smear all over my artwork. And second of all, um, it can make it so that my friends have to breathe it in and we don't want that because it'll make them cough and all that stuff. So the next thing I'm going to do is get an orange because where the yellow and the red meet, it kind of has an orange color. I'm going to put a little bit of orange on there for those spots. And I'm going to be careful that I don't get it in my highlight spot. So I'm going to go around that spot where the highlight is because that's going to stay a nice bright white. I'm going to color it. And notice when I'm when I'm drawing it, I'm kind of drawing my um, lines the same direction that they go on the apple. So you can see there's kind of lines coming around the apple. So I'm kind of pointing them in the same direction that they are on my apple. And then I've got red on my apple. So I'm going to fill in the rest of this with red. And since this is such a big area to cover, I can actually use the side of this to fill it in, but you have to be careful when you get over to the edges that you don't go outside of the apple. So if you get close to the edge, you can use the tips of it or the, the skinny side to fill it in. And again, don't, don't do anything with that dust because you're going to need it. So when I'm filling it in, I don't have to worry too much about getting everything. I can leave a little bit of white because I'm going to show you something to do after this so that you can fill that in. So I have my yellows, my oranges, and my reds to make my apple. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a clean finger, a finger that has yellows, oranges, and reds on it, or a finger that doesn't have anything on it yet. And I'm going to use that finger to very gently move that dust around that I made and it'll mix the colors that I have. It'll blend them together. You can see how my yellows and oranges and reds are all kind of blending together.
And I have a nice, nice apple with different colors on it, just like that. Now I'm going to look at my apple and I'm going to look at this and see if there's anything I'm missing on it. And now that I have my apple blended, I can carefully pick it up and tap it onto the paper towel that's at your table. And you're just going to tap it gently and you can see how the dust fell off of it. And now you have a nice apple without all that dust on it. And then I'm going to look, because my apple has a shadow underneath it, just like the one we drew. So we're going to make the table next, and we're going to use um, the colors to make the shadow. So you get to choose what color you want your table to be today. You can choose whatever color you want. I think I'm going to have my table be green. It's the complement of red, and I think it would make a nice color. So I'm going to choose green, and I'm going to use the light green, and I'm going to fill in my table with a light green. And I have to be extra careful because when it gets to the edge by the apple, I want to make sure I don't get any of that. I don't want any of that to turn, um, to mix together because it'll make an icky brown color and it'll look really sloppy and we don't want that. So I'm just using the side of my chalk right now to carefully fill in the table. Stay inside that line there. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Carefully, carefully fill it in. And I'm going to go right over top of the shadow because the shadow is on the table. And that table is going to be the same color even in the shadow. So I'm going to carefully draw it, fill it all in with the green. Make sure I leave that dust there because I'm going to need it. And then, if you can very carefully, you can kind of see that I still have this um, spot here where the shadow goes. I'm going to make that um, darker for my shadow. So there's a couple ways I can do it. Since I use the light green, I can use dark green to make my shadow. So I can go in and carefully fill that shadow in with a dark green. And I can fill that in. It's going right over top of that light green. I'm filling it in, getting some dust of my dark green in there. So now I have my table filled in with my shadow. And I can use a clean finger, so I don't want to use this finger because it will get orange in my green. So I use a clean finger. And I can use my finger to blend it so that that white's not showing anymore. And when I blend the shadow, I'm going to make sure that I'm careful that I'm blending it the same way the shadow goes. I'm not blending it out here because I don't want the shadow to spread because the shadow is only in one spot. So I'm making that shadow just like that. And then I've got dark green on my finger now, so if I go up to that section, it's going to turn it dark green, and I don't want that. So I'm going to use a clean finger again. So by the time you're done, you're going to have to wash your hands a lot, because you're going to have lots of chalk on them. So there we have our shadow. But usually right underneath the object, closest to the object, it's going to be even darker than it is out here. So I want to make this area darker. So there's some different ways I can do that. I can use the dark green again, or I can use a different dark color to make that darker area in there. So I think I'm going to take a dark, I have a dark brown here, and I'm going to use a little bit of that dark brown to make that shadow right up underneath my apple. And I'm just going to do it just like that, and then I'm going to use um, one of my fingers again to blend that in. Make it so that it blends in with that green. 
and you can see it made a darker shadow right underneath my apple. And I have a bunch of buildup on there, so I'm going to tap it. And now I have my beautiful apple. Now you can look close and you can see that there's a little bit of white along the edge of my apple. And I don't want that to show because it's going to look like it's glowing. So I'm going to use a clean finger again, or that finger that I used red on before. And I'm going to make it so my apple goes right to the edge. I don't want any of that white to show. So now I have beautiful shadow on the table, but this doesn't look quite right, does it? Because I have all this, it's all one color, but there's a shadow here. So I want to take and I want to make a shadow on my apple. Because just like we looked at when we used the flashlights, when you're shining light over here, this side of your apple is going to be in shadow. And we want the same thing on our apples here. So I'm going to take a color and make a shadow on here. So you'll notice even just with using my fingers, because my finger had some of this brown and green on it, and just by using that, I can make a shadow on my apple. It makes this side of my apple a little darker. See how I made that little bit of shadow? But I think it needs a little more than that. So I'm going to get um, a dark color again. Let's see, I've got red. I could use red, but that's going to make it seem brighter because red is such a bright color. So I'm actually going to use the complement of red. The complement of green, red is green. It's the opposite of red is green. So I'm going to use the complement. And I'm going to go right along this edge, right where my shadow is. And just lightly I'm going to use that green to make a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, I didn't press real hard. It's still kind of streaky. But I've got a nice, a nice shadow there. And then I'm going to take, and again I'm going to use my finger blend that in to make that shadow on this side of my apple. I'm only doing it on the shadow side of my apple. I don't want it on the side that the light's going to be on. And then I'm going to tap it again to get that extra off. So now I have an apple with a shadow. The next thing I need to do is add my stem. So I'm going to be careful because when I add my stem, I don't want to get anything else on it. So I can actually use this paper towel again and rest my hand on that so that when I'm drawing, I'm not going to smear what I have done. So I'm going to very carefully, just the corner of, just the corner of this chalk that I have, very carefully, I'm going to draw my stem in there. And then I'm going to tap it. Now I have a beautiful apple with a stem. So now I have my shadows down here. And I have this spot right here that has a little bit of a shadow in it. So I can actually just go with my finger and use that brown from the stem to make a shadow in there. So it looks a little bit more like there's an indent there because my apple has this spot in the top. So now there's a little bit of a shadow there. The last thing I need to do is add a highlight, highlight on my apple. So I'm going to take the white, because my highlight got covered when I was spreading that color around. I'm going to take that white and I'm going to carefully fill my highlight back in with white. And there's a highlight over here, but then there's also going to be a little bit that comes over on this side too because my light's coming from up here it hits this side and a little bit of this side so I can add a little bit of white on this side to make some highlights too and even on this edge here it's going to be lighter than over here so I'm going to add a little bit of white here and then I can use my finger one of my clean fingers to blend that in a little bit so that this side of my apple is lighter than the other side of my apple. So you have the light coming down here. Now when I blended that, I kind of blended in my highlight a little bit. So I'm going to add that highlight back in there. Make sure that's a nice bright highlight in there. So 
So now you have a beautiful apple and you have a beautiful shadow from your apple. Great job, third graders.